morning, everyone. Welcome to Ergonomics Facilities and Planning for Hospitality. So this PowerPoint presentation is prepared by Sir Gemma Anthony O. Garcia. So we are now already at our week seven and our topic for week seven is heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems and for this week we will discuss the factors that affect guests and employee comfort and also identify guest room or HVAC concerns so HVAC means uh, heating ventilating and air condition so let's proceed to our discussion so we have here uh, building heating ventilating and air conditioning or HVAC systems create and maintain the levels of comfort required by guests and employees. So mainly, HVAC systems must be properly selected, operated, and maintained if they are to provide an appropriate level of comfort. So to maintain comfort, you need to understand the basic elements of comfort. So basically, the capabilities, the limitations, and operating costs of various types of HVAC systems are important as well, especially as they relate to decisions about equipment selection and overall cost control. So mainly for this one, uh, HVAC systems um, should have proper maintenance because not only it will create comfortable conditions but also will help control the operating costs associated with the equipment and knowledge of fuel and equipment options can help manage uh, the management to make decisions for new and retrofit applications in addition to that certain elements of the HVAC system need special care to avoid potential safety and health problems as well. So uh, there are many types of systems and the underlying ways in which they operate are somewhat similar as well. So knowing how a property creates heating and cooling and provides ventilation will help you to understand the ways in which each of these uses help to produce building so we have here uh, factors that influence building comfort. So the concept of comfort involves a number of factors and mainly HVAC systems maintain comfort by modifying and controlling the factors that influence comfort as well, such as the indoor temperature, humidity, air movement, room surface, temperatures, and overall air quality. The systems use equipment such as furnaces and boilers to produce heat, air conditioners and chillers to produce cold, fans and ductwork to move air, and filters and air washers to clean the air. So these are the factors. Uh, room air temperature, room air movement, relative humidity of room air, acidity level in the room, clothing worn by room occupants and temperature of the room surfaces. So uh, mainly most, fact, most of these factors will seem quite obvious to you. So let's go back to here. So a room's comfort level can be greatly changed by providing air such as with a fan in the summer. A humid environment can be less comfortable in summer than a drier environment at the same temperature. If we are actively exercising, we find cooler, warmer than he or she would be in a team short sleeve shirt and shorts as well. And basically, an individual's comfort is the result of balancing the heat produced by his or her body with the surrounding environment. So for one person, body heat is lost by convection, radiation, and evaporation. So what are these uh, three, the convection, radiation, and evaporation? 
So, convection involves the transfer of heat due to the movement of air over a person's skin and a difference in temperature between the air and the skin. So, basically, the more rapid air movement or the cooler, colder the air, the more rapid is the transfer of heat. And transfer of heat by radiation occurs when two surfaces are at different temperatures. Energy is transferred in the form of thermal radiation from the warmer to the colder surface. And for evaporation, evaporation transfers heat because in order to turn water from a liquid to a vapor and heat must be added to the water with to human comfort this heat is removed from a person's body as perspiration or powies evaporated from his or her skin so those are the differences between radiation um convection and evaporation So let's go next. Okay. So let's discuss air quality. So for air quality, uh, air quality also involves subtle issues such as the possible impact of mold spores, bacteria, and airborne particles of various types on occupant well-being. And a well-being designed and properly function functioning HVAC system strives to meet all the comfort needs while striving to meet thermal comfort needs room. Room and building HVAC systems must meet other comfort needs as well. Acoustic comfort is one of these needs. So basically, HVAC systems usually move some fluid, such as the air, water, or boat. And this movement may make noise due to either the fluid itself or the pump or fan moving the fluid. Sometimes a low level of noise is intentionally designed into equipment. For example, an air distribution system because it is it can serve to mask our other sounds. This is known as the white noise approach. Also, air that is discharged at too high a rate can make unwanted noise. So, uh, controlling ventilation. Airflow rate is necessary, and because of that, uh, there might be some situations such as additional noise and vibration, and this additional noise and vibration um, can be generated by the equipment used to fans or pumps uh, bearing deterioration, and related problems also can result in the transmission of vibration due to the ductwork, the piping, or the building itself. So. While these programs should be dealt with in the designs of systems, all of them can occur because of a faulty maintenance program. So we have here a figure showing uh, a, a figure showing uh, a guest room. So this one illustrates some of the challenges facing HVAC system in a typical guest room. So in the diagram, we could see that the exterior wall of the guest room may add heat to the subtract or, or subtract heat from the space, so depending on the season. So the windows allow solar energy to enter and add heat to the room. The guest television lights and other equipment add heat to the room as well because of the body heat. The shower and bath also add heat. Air leakage around the windows and the door if the guest room opens to the outside can add cold or hot air to the room as well depending on the season. So moisture is added by bath and shower and by the breath of and skin evaporation from room occupants. The bathroom vent 
fan removes air that must be replaced. And this replacement air eventually enters the building from outside, which means it must be heated or cooled somewhere. So the HVAC system is ideally able to deal with all of these variable inputs to and outputs from the space. So it is referred to as loads by engineers. So basically, um, all factors inside a guest room may affect the heat inside the guest room and also may affect the coldness inside the guest room. So it depends also in the season and um, the factors that are in the guest room. So heating sources and equipment. So the major space conditioning need of guest rooms and many other spaces involves cooling. Yet for operations in colder climates, the space heating needs are quite large and the maintenance needs association, associated with heating equipment are very important. Heating equipment due to the flame and flue gases that are generally present. In addition, a failure of the heating system can have disastrous effects on the building because of freezing in contrast. A failure of the cooling system generally has much less important effects on the building itself. So what are these heat sources? So options for heating, uh, if you will, are shown in our diagram three. So I will show you later. So basically for this one, uh, the type of fuel selected for a location will be uh, dictated by factors such as availability, relative cost of the fuel, cost of equipment and systems to use the fuel, and environmental constraints and safety concerns. So this is our um, diagram or exhibit tree. So we have here uh, three columns. So each uh, first column is about fuel types. Our second column is about heat content or the unit purchase. And uh, the third column is all about the comments regarding about our fuel types. So what are these fuel types? We have electricity, uh, natural gas, liquefied petroleum, fuel oil, and steam. So let's uh, check out about the comment regarding about electricity. So use in electric heaters requires no flu since there are no products of combustion, usually the most expensive form of heat. So um, electric heaters are the most expensive. Meanwhile, let's check on natural gas. So natural gas, uh, flu required clean burning and complete condensing and is very efficient. So this one. So these are the comments to our um, fuel types. So you may read also the liquefied petroleum comments, fuel, uh, oil, and steam as well. So let's proceed to our. Uh, Next, uh, you may also choose electricity if reliable supply of an alternative fuel is not available. So electrical space and heating equipment most commonly passes electricity is to operate a heat pump in method of heating. So natural gas such as um, LPG or liquefied petroleum gas usually liquefied uh, propane. Fuel oil all produce heat as a result of combustion. This combustion requires sufficient supplies of oxygen and produces heat, carbon dioxide, water, and other products. Combustion occurs in a furnace or boiler. A furnace is a device that provides hot air and furnaces may be found in small restaurants and in individual lodging units such as timeshares and condominiums. Boilers produce steam or hot water that may be used both for space heating or for other heating needs as well. Oh, efficient 
fuel combustion also requires the correct mix of combustion of air and fuel. So too little combustion air will cause the fuel to burn completely, incompletely, which leads to waste. Too much combustion air will reduce the temperature of the combustion just gases and therefore the amount of heat that can be removed from these gases as well. Larger commercial units now use, um, so for this one, larger commercial units now use a controlled combustion process in which air or oxygen use is controlled adjustable. The flue gas temperature may also indicate efficiency problems. A low flue gas temperature may indicate that too much air is being supplied. A high flue gas temperature may indicate that combustion heat is not being transferred efficiently. So both situations call for maintenance attention. So in order to properly adjust a boiler or furnace, the maintenance person will require most of or all of the following equipment. So what is a burner and boiler um, machines? So maintenance uh, for this one, uh, the maintenance needs of furnaces and boilers are similar. They include actions that promote efficient and safe operation and that prolong the operating life of the equipment. There is an overlap in actions. Take in these three areas. Actions to improve efficiency can help prolong life and vice versa. Because furnaces and boilers are important in making gas and employee needs their proper and safe operation is very crucial. So basically, furnace and boiler efficiency involves in two aspects. So the efficient combustion of the fuel and the efficient transfer of that combustion heat to the air or water being heated. So these are the following equipment. We have the smoker meter. So also flue gas dial thermometer, carbon dioxide or oxygen analyzer and the draft gauge. So for this one, uh, the smoker meter, it is a device that takes a sample of soot from the flame and produces a stained piece paper. This paper is then compared with a standard chart that links the degree of staining to the combustion efficiency of the unit. The flue gas thermometer, so it is a thermometer capable of accurately measuring the high temperatures encountered in the hex hose flue. Some operations leave this device installed at all times. If this is done, take care of that portion in the flue does not become cake with soot, which can cause erroneous readings. So it is proper. Uh, it is very crucial that all of these uh, devices should be for equipment should be maintained. Also, we have the carbon dioxide or oxygen analyzer, and it is a device that measures either the carbon dioxide or oxygen content of the blue gas. We also have the gray draft gauge, and this device uh, measures the amount or draft of air buoyancy in the furnace, and it indicates the amount of air flow through the furnace as well. Now let's go to our cooling sources and equipment. So mechanical cooling equipment is used to provide the cooling required in many climates. This equipment extracts heat from either air or water and uses this cooled air or water to absorb heat in the building spaces, thereby cooling the spaces. So basically, the equipment may be used the vapor compression process uh, or the absorption process. And since vapor compression is much more common, the absorption process will not be discussed in this lesson. However, recent concerns over the impact of vapor compression refrigerants on the environment may create a restriction of absorption systems as well. And absorption process are used in some gas from refrigerators and minibars.
So we have here the refrigeration cycle. So as you can see in our image, there is a cycle. So in the cycle, a circulating refrigerant removes heat from one location and transfers this heat to another location where it is rejected. Heat removal occurs in the evaporator. So we have here the evaporator. And basically, while well, the heat is rejected in the condenser. So the compressor provides energy necessary to accomplish this heat transfer. And the expansion valve, we have here expansion valve. Uh, it controls the flow of refrigerant through the system. In the vapor compression process, the refrigerant is boiled or converted from a liquid to a vapor. In the evaporator, uh, the energy used to boil the refrigerant is taken from the air or water being cooled. The refrigerant vapor then leaves the evaporator and enters the compressor, which raises the temperature and pressure of this gas. The compressor is powered by an electric motor, and it is the major energy using component of the cycle. The high temperature the, and high pressure refrigerant gas then leaves the compressor and enters the condens condenser. In the condenser, it releases heat to the condenser's cooling medium, either air or water, and reverts to a liquid. The liquid refrigerant then moves to the expansion valve where it is pressure, where its pressure is reduced, which causes its temperature to drop. The cold low pressure liquid refrigerant then enters the evaporator and the cycle repeats. So this is the basic uh vapor compression in the refrigeration cycle. Now we also have some cooling systems that we need to operate and maintain. So what are these? So basically all refrigeration system components need to function properly. Maintenance activities with regard to this system include the following. We have to inspect equipment for refrigerant leaks because this can be and this can be identified by presence of oil carried outside the system by leaking refrigerant. Also check refrigerant dryers for indicators of water contamination. So replace all dryers showing signs of water and re-inspect this dryer so you can shortly to be sure the problem has not occurred. Clean the air cooled condensers and vapors as well. Also, clean condensate heat pans and drain lines from evaporators. Replace alongside tablets, I mean, replace algaecide tablets in drip pans and reapply protective paints. And also, uh, check equipment operating conditions to be sure each unit is operating correctly. Refer to equipment manuals and Perform all recommended drive motor maintenance, paying particular attention to operating temperature and motor starting controls. High operating temperatures and repeated starting and stopping are major factors in the refrigerator system. Motor failure. And also for our um, cooling sources equipment, and cooling system operations maintenance, we have a space cooling equipment and this one uses different types of compressors. We have the reciprocating centrifugal and rotary. So for reciprocating compressors, it is a cylinder moving within a chamber to compress the refrigerant. Maintenance needs, the maintenance needs resemble those of automotive engines on site staff and can sometimes handle these needs. Since they may be relatively small and designed to be replaced, units may be exchanged for a boat or other replacement units. For centrifugal units, these are generally larger 
compressors and require more care in maintenance and shutdown. So basically, particular care is needed to avoid the introduction of air and water, which can cause many components to fail because of the complexity of the centrifugal units maintenance contracts are often used to provide the necessary services. And the last um, maintenance concern is the, or the last compressor that needs a maintenance concern is the rotary compressor. And these are pretty much are among the smaller compressors found at the property. They are often used in the through the wall gas from units and may be used in other similarly sized applications. Because of the small size and applications for these units, they are often replaced with an exchange unit rather than repaired at the property. So we have another uh, topic, which is the gas room HVAC system types. For this one, um, Pretty much boilers, furnaces, chillers, and refrigeration devices of various types are combined with pumps, pipes, ducts, fans, and other components to create the building HVAC system. Depending on the type of building, location within the building, the climate, and other factors, the type of space conditioning system installed will also vary. These systems come in variety of configurations, basically each having slightly different operating characteristics. And the two major system types is the centralized and decentralized. All modern centralized systems use pipes to distribute hot or chilled water to fan coil units in the guest room. Meanwhile, most decentralized units use electrical equipment in the guest room itself to provide heating and cooling. The other systems in the table are less frequently found, but they may be used in some applications. So let's discuss centralized systems. Centralized systems use boilers to create hot water and chillers to create cold water. The hot and cold water is regulated to fan coil units in the gas rooms. Air blown through the fan coils where the heat is transferred either to air from the water and heating or cooling occurs. Because the only devices operating in the gas room are small fans, centralized systems are relatively quiet. And for this, for this uh, centralized system, we have um, three types of uh, systems. We have the two type, two pipe system, three pipe system, and four pipe system. Uh, the two pipe system allows both heating and cooling, but only one of these at a time. In two pipe design, someone must decide whether to provide heating or cooling on a given day. For the three pipe system, it is relatively uncommon. So the three pipe system is relatively uncommon, especially in recent construction. And this system provides both hot and cold water to the fan coil units at all times and mixes the return water from the fan coils. The three pipe system can provide good guest room comfort since heating and cooling can be provided as needed. And for the four type, uh, four pipe system, we have here, uh, this system provides the same level of comfort as the pre three pipe system, but keeps the cold and water, hot water return separated. This leads to greater boiler and chiller efficiency since much less energy is needed to reheat and recool the return water. The four pipe system is the most expensive central system option to install since it requires more extensive piping and two coils in the fan coil unit. So 
the control. So for this one, the control of comfort in the guest room can involve several different methods and it depends on the system. And for those systems with a wall-mounted thermostat, the thermostat generally controls one or more valves in the fan coil unit. So after that, we have the decentral decentralized systems, and it is placed. Uh, decentralized system place the heating and cooling sources within the guest room itself or along the outside wall. An electric baseboard heating system is a decentralized heat source. Electric heaters may also be well mounted with a fan arrangement found in some bathroom areas. Electric baseboard or fan force units generally do not incorporate any method of providing or delivering cooling as well. For operations in cold climates or those operating seasonally, it may be satisfactory to provide heat only. However, most guest rooms require both heating and cooling and some require only cooling. Decentralized systems that provide cooling use a small refrigerator system located within a cabinet that extends through the outside wall of the guest room. The condenser has access to outside air, which it uses for heat projection. The evaporator is cold or uh, is located within the room and room air is circulated through the evaporator where it is cooled and dehumidified. For our guest room ventilation, uh, providing fresh air to guest rooms can be a problem. Most guest rooms operate at a slight negative pressure due to the bathroom ventilation fan, and the air removed by this fan must be replaced from somewhere. Guest rooms with central HVAC systems may rely on airflow under the guest room door from a corridor to provide makeup air. If air does not enter the room under the door, it must migrate from somewhere and will leak in whenever it can, often along windows through, through any opening. The centralized HVAC units adjust the amount of outside air they admit. discuss our uh, guest room HVAC maintenance. For this one, guest room fan chorus units are relatively simple devices and maintenance of these units is generally part of the preventive maintenance or the guest room maintenance activity. A common PM checklist for this units would include the following. So we have here Checking the operation of all valves and control knobs. Checking the thermostat for proper operational appearance and physical connections. Cleaning the filter inlet wheel and physical connections. Replacing the L filter. Cleaning the condensate drain and replacing algicide tablets. Inspecting fans and cleaning and tightening connections. Checking the condition and fit of electrical plugs and connections. Checking and cleaning the outside air vent. Cleaning or faults. Lubricating blower motors. And plating locations such as condensate pan and any deteriorated surfaces. Reapply corrosion treatment if it is in coastal areas. So mainly... Uh, the maintenance needs of HVAC system supplying public areas are derived from the maintenance needs of their individual components. These needs include filter changes, fan cleaning and lubrication, cleaning of heat transfer surfaces, cleaning of rain fans, checking of refrigerants for moisture and leakage, belt checking and replacement, and a variety of other maintenance actions. Once again, the equipment supply should also supply a list of suggested maintenance actions, which should then become part of the unit's maintenance program. Cleaning fans and heat transfer services will help the system to operate efficiently at rated capacity and to reduce problems with fan imbalance caused by dirt accumulation. 
for backend system systems, it may be necessary to clean docs as well to remove the boot of cause by neglect. So for your activities, um, for week seven, we have two activities, activity one and activity two. So can they move the instructions? For activity one, read the accompanying story answering 10 to 15 sentences is question provided by professor so we have three questions for activity two we have um, research and read five articles of accommodation which a fox system problems and find out how they resolve such problems write your findings in the table please follow the template so thank you once again for, for week seven we have discussed the factors that affect guests and employ comfort and also identified guests from each one so thank you once again everyone and god bless